in treating Castleman's disease, it's both idiopathic form and the KSHV-associated form, it's important to recognize that patients can present with a wide range of symptoms from minor fevers and anemia to severe um, edema or swelling, anemia, and can be hospitalized sometimes even in intensive care units. One of the questions we were looking at at the study today was to try to find out which baseline factors predicted good long-term out outcomes in patients with Castleman's disease. We treated 22 patients over this time period. All patients uniformly received rituximab combined with liposomal doxorubicin. And we looked at HIV-associated factors, which in other cancers sometimes predict death. These are things like low CD4 counts or HIV, uh, uncontrolled HIV. We looked at Castleman's associated symptoms, including uh, circulating KSHV viral load, which is a marker of disease, as well as other laboratory abnormalities, which can be quite common. And we lastly looked at KS, or concurrent Kaposi sarcoma, as a risk factor. And Kaposi sarcoma can be quantified by how much disease you have, whether it includes uh, internal organs or just the skin, and if it includes the skin, how much skin is involved. And interestingly, looking at all of these factors, the only factor that predicted survival was advanced Kaposi sarcoma. In the study, patients with advanced Kaposi sarcoma at five years, 56% were alive, whereas those without advanced Kaposi sarcoma, the overall survival at five years and beyond was 91%, which was similar to other uh, cohorts treating it with just rituximab alone. I th additionally, in our study, we found that 70% of patients were free of disease after a short period of treatment. The median number of cycles with, was three, and patients received anywhere from three to nine cycles. Um, and these responses were durable once patients um, were uh, initially treated with, Castle, uh, with rituximab plus liposomal doxorubicin. I think the important points from the study were to recognize that advanced Kaposi sarcoma needs additional therapies in addition to rituximab and liposomal doxorubicin. Um, and secondarily, that patients with advanced Kaposi sarcoma associated Castleman's disease can do well in the long run, even when critically ill at baseline. So multicentric Castleman's disease is a group of diseases, and it's generally divided into two main types. One is associated with a virus called Kaposi sarcoma herpes virus, or HHV8, which is very similar to the Epstein-Barr virus. This form of Castleman's disease is most commonly seen in HIV-positive patients, but is also seen in transplant patients and elderly patients. The other form of multicentric Castleman's disease does not have a known viral cause and is sometimes called idiopathic multicentric Castleman's disease. The treatment of these two diseases are currently different. Idiopathic multicentric Castleman's disease is generally first treated with siltuximab, a monoclonal antibody against interleukin-6, whereas KSHV-associated multicentric Castleman's disease, which again is a B-cell lymphoproliferative disorder, is generally treated with the anti-CD20 monoclonal antibody rituximab.